What's up guys, Eric here and welcome to another video on Crisis on Infinite Earths, except this time we are not talking about what may happen, spoilers, anything like that. The, the crisis is over. The five episodes are done. We are done with Crisis in terms of storytelling and now we're left with a bunch of unanswered questions and things that we don't know yet. Some of them will probably get answered as the shows go on for the remainder of their season. Some of these things will probably never get answered on screen and that's what we're doing in today's video. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with Crisis. I can't believe I'm saying that because there's so many spoilers out there already, but I'm just gonna do this for myself. Careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with Crisis, okay? So what we're gonna be talking about in today's video, actually there's a couple things we're gonna talk about, but the main thing is we're gonna be talking about the reverse flash. It seems like that's a hot button topic a lot of people were upset about that. Um, there's so many articles, and as always, I'm gonna link this article from tvline.com in the info box below. There's so many things I wanna talk about, so over the next few days, we're gonna try and cover as many of these uh, unanswered questions or things like that that I feel are important to me that I wanna talk about on camera. The big one is because my boy, the Reverse Flash, the character that I love the most in terms of like bad guys and things like that in the Arrowverse, uh, was nowhere to be seen in Crisis. And a lot of people thought that we were gonna see him and we did not see him. There's a lot of people upset. And before we get into this article, okay, before we start talking about these questions, I just wanna say that that newspaper article from season one, something that so many people have talked about for so long, I said this during my live stream and I'll say it again here, I've never been a fan of holding on to that article for so, so, so long. At the end of season three, I thought we were gonna be done with it and then we weren't. And at the end of season four, we weren't. And then at the end of season five, we weren't. This article just will not go away. And I think my issue with it is that everything we've done outside of season one has been a, a large amount of growth in terms of like the Arrowverse in general, introducing characters, characters that were there are gone, storylines that were there in season one are no longer there in, you know, in seasons four, five, six, whatever, excuse me. And so the article kept getting outdated to me in terms of like the prep for it. I thought after season three, we were gonna be done with this article. The article talks about the red skies, about the flash disappearing in a battle with the reverse flash in this epic battle. And everyone was waiting for it. And I do think, that it was part, it was the team's fault over at the showrunners and everybody involved with Flash. It was their fault for continuing to push this article because they could have stopped it at any point, but they didn't, they kept going with it. And so I do put a lot of the blame on them for that because even up until Crisis, we were still talking about this, this battle and things changing and whatnot. I just, it was mostly their fault in my opinion for the way the fans feel in regards to this article and what did not happen in Crisis. So I hope that they do not continue to blame the fans for expectations because you set the expectations. It was absolutely 100% the showrunner's fault. Anybody that was involved with The Flash that kept this article going, it's been your fault. I'm sorry, it, it is. No one else could have done those, could have kept that article going or made those changes except for you. So anything that expectations that the fans had for Reverse Flash comes from people that were involved with The Flash. That's just my thoughts on it. Also, in season one of The Flash, I don't think they could have seen that we were going to be doing this big, huge crossover six years later. Like, I don't think they could. And and so I do believe that the people that created the article back in season one or the people involved with that, um, they are certainly not at, at fault for what's going on now because they couldn't have known what was going to happen. So it's it's just over the, t the years since season three, I think the continued addition of this story in this article has been a problem. So anyway... With that being said, we're gonna talk about why the reverse flash didn't show up. They actually, Mark Guggenheim, of course, is at it again, and he answers the question. So here we go, let's read this article here. Um, it goes, why didn't the flash face off against reverse flash as Iris's new story had long foretold? This is a question that everybody's been asking. You're not gonna believe this answer. Well, maybe you will. It says, I guess what it really comes down to is not being beholden to a headline from six years ago that was not written by any of the showrunners involved in the crossover. Now I said that, that that's true and I agree with that, but you've continued to use this article season after season after season. So it's great that you don't wanna hold it to that headline from that first season, but you, even up until now, you've used the article. So I don't think that's really an excuse. Um, a lot of things drive our stories and a lot of things determine what choices we make. To me, tracking toward a headline written six years ago is literally the definition of the cart driving the horse. Well, Mark, I agree and disagree with you there. I agree that I don't like the idea of this headline driving the story of the show, but you've continued to use it 
season after season after season after season. So you can't tell me that you don't want to use it because it's the cart driving the horse when you're the one who has been, not you specifically, but you as in the showrunners and people involved with The Flash have been using this article all this time. You have been doing it. The fans are not the ones that continuously bring it up. You have been doing it. He goes on to say, we've had Reverse Flash so prominent in the Arrowverse over the years, including in last year's crossover and the crossover before that. I love the character and I love Tom Cavanaugh as a person. I certainly love Matt Lesher's version, but you had to make choices. So look, hear, hear me out. Your choice was to not include the Reverse Flash in the one event that you had been teasing him to show up in. That was your choice. We've used him so many other places, over here, over here, over here, but we're not going to include him in the event that we have teased him to be a part of for six years. I understand the sentiment and I do agree with you in terms of the way you want the storytelling to go, but you brought this on yourself. This was your fault. This, this was your fault. You should have made this decision well before you kept pushing that story. And I mean, Look at season, look at the season with Nora. <laughs> I mean, like, yes, the reverse flash has been a huge part of everything, but you have used this story in, in every step of the way with the flash. You say the headline is written six years ago, but that's not just the case. Like literally the headline has been updated every season, every season, the headline has been updated. So for you to act as if this headline existed in season one and has not shown up since season one, I think is a cop-out. I think it's a cop-out. I don't necessarily have a problem with the reverse flash not showing up in Crisis. I think Crisis, it did what it needed to do in terms of what I expected to happen. Couple of curveballs there, but for the most part, I think it did what I expected it to do. But I honestly felt that your teasing of this battle with the reverse flash and the, the, the every season you've done it, leading up into Crisis, for you to just say now afterwards that, oh, we didn't use him because of this reason, I think is very lazy. It's lazy and it's looking for validation for your decisions. And I don't think it's right. I don't think it's fair to the fans. I don't think it's fair to, to anyone who loves this character. Like, I'm, you know, I've come to peace with it simply because I didn't, I kept my expectations very low. But I don't think that's right. I don't think it's right. I don't think everybody should have to because of the fact that you have teased this for so long. So I personally feel as if this was a huge, huge mistake. I was going to do more than one topic, but we're already on, on eight minutes here. So I'm probably just going to talk about this one thing. I'll do a separate video about a couple of other topics this weekend. But the reverse flash battle with the flash, it's going to happen. You're gonna, it's gonna happen eventually. Like you said, you've been using him for a very long time. And I think you realized how good this character was and that's why you kept using him in other crossovers. But to not use him in the one crossover that he's supposed to be a part of, according to your your show lore, it just baffles me. But I guess nothing should because Mark Guggenheim makes some of the strangest decisions when it comes to these shows. And I do believe that a lot of people are willing to give him a pass. Like I'm sitting here complaining about this and I know a lot of people are going to feel the same way about it, but I know there's a lot of people who are going to say, well, he's right. They're going to defend him. They're going to take his side and that's absolutely fine. But I think it's, it's giving him a pass. I think it's giving him a pass here because if you're talking about the cart driving the horse, well, yeah. And you've left that cart in front of the show for six years. This could have been your time to wrap this up. The truth of the matter is, I honestly believe that you want to tell more stories with the Reverse Flash. You want to use him in future seasons and future shows. And you didn't want to have him go out in this big battle and then have to bring him back later on and explain it. So it made it easier for you. But you honestly should have thought about that two years ago. Two seasons ago, you should have started getting away from that headline. You should have started walking away from it. Maybe had our characters reflect on the headline saying, oh yeah, remember that headline or something like that. But actually using the headline all the way up until recently is like, it's your fault. The expectations of the fans in this situation, it's your fault. It's no one's fault, but your own and the people involved with the flash. And I personally 
do not feel sorry for anyone behind the scenes who gets gets crap for this, honestly. Because I do feel like you could have done something about it. You could have started this two seasons ago. Anyway, so I'm going to put the link to this article with TV Line down in the info box below. There's a lot more questions. There's a lot more things I want to talk about, but this video would end up being like 40 minutes long and I didn't think it would, but it would. I like to keep my videos, <laughs> I say short. I'm very long-winded, as you guys know, but I don't want to do a 40-minute video about this. I'd rather just break it up so you guys can watch the ones you want to watch. So anyway, uh, with that being said, I think I'm, I'm going to wrap it up here, um, and we'll continue to talk about these questions um, in other videos. And so I want to throw this out there. What are your thoughts on the reverse flash? What are your thoughts on this, on the explanation? on everything that happened, go down in the comment section below. Let me know, because I am curious what you guys think about this. This is a pretty basic, and it's almost like saying it's not my fault. <laughs> and I don't like that at all, because it is. <laughs> it is your fault. Well, it's everybody's fault that's involved with the, the upper echelons of people over at the Arrowverse. So, you know, I may catch flack for this. I don't, I don't really care anymore. Um, but leave a comment below. If you enjoy the content on my channel, make sure you subscribe, become part of the Ericverse as I make videos all week long. I also do live streams with Pagey and other uh, guests. So if you're interested in that, hit the notification bell so you make sure you don't miss out on any of my live streams. I don't know if that really matters. YouTube screws up on that anyway. Um, and if you're interested in becoming part of Team Eric, Hit the join feature. You will get custom badges that you can use in the chat section of uh, live streams. And I believe they show up in the comment section as well. You also get access to custom emojis that are coming before the end of this month. And you will get access to early access content as well as unreleased content to my main channel um, and videos specifically for Team Eric members. And uh, also it helps support the channel uh, because YouTube doesn't like some of the stuff that we do. So uh, if you could do that, please do. And if not, still thank you so much for watching my video. Give me a thumbs up, share the video, all that good stuff, and I will catch you guys later on. Have a great afternoon.